we're going to take a quick look at arithmetic sequences. Two definitions we need to get out of the way is first arithmetic sequence and that's a sequence where the difference between consecutive terms is constant and then that difference is called the common difference. So here's going to be our first example. It says find the rule for the sequence and then find the 25th term. Well the first thing you have to do is check to make sure it's arithmetic. So we want to look at the difference between consecutive terms. So one way to do this is you can ask yourself what do I have to do 30 to get the 25? Well that would be minus 5. What do I have to do to 25 to get to 20? Well I have to minus 5. What do I have to do to 20 to get down to 15? after minus 5. So notice every time I got the same value right here, minus 5, that's my common difference. Um, the other way you can do this is you can take your a sub 2 minus a sub 1. So in this case it would be 25 minus 30 and you get negative 5 and then you would do it with your next one. So you would do a sub 3 minus a sub 2. So 20 minus 25 gives us that negative 5 again and the last one 15 minus 20 still gives you a negative 5. So either way works um, and it still finds the same common difference. So I know that our common difference is equal to negative 5. Well now if I look at um, a scatter plot of these points you can see that this is linear. Well anytime we have an arithmetic sequence we're actually going to get a straight line which means that our rule for this sequence is going to be in the form y equals mx plus b. Now there's multiple different ways that you can solve this um, equation out to get your line. I'm going to go ahead and just use y equals mx plus b. And above here I'm going to list my n values. So the 30 was the first n value, 25 is the second, 20 is the third, and 15 is the fourth. And I'm just going to pick um, one of these pairs. So think of this as an x and a y chart. So my x values are my n and my y's are my a sub n's, my values. Now if I come down here, I'm going to I'm going to use the 3 and the 20. So I'm going to plug in my y for the with a 20. My m I'm going to leave as m for right now and then my x is going to be 3 and then my b I'm still going to leave for as b right now. Now with this one, just based off of the way the graph goes, you could tell exactly where b was, but we're going to assume you couldn't. So what we also need to find is the m, because right now we have two variables, and I need to figure out what um, m is so I can solve it for b. Because when I'm all said and done, I have to have a number in here for m, and I have to have a number in here for b. The x and the y will go back to being variables, but I need to temporarily plug numbers in there so I can figure out what my m and my b are. Now from my graph I'm going to do my rise over run or you could do your slope formula where you do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I'm just going to take a look at my graph here and what's my slope. So my rise would be negative 5 and my run was 1. So my slope is equal to negative 5 over 1 which is just negative 5. Notice our slope is the exact same as our common difference and it'll be that way every single time. So right now I have 20 is equal to, and I'm going to plug in my negative 5 for my slope, solve this out for b, and I'm going to end up getting that b is equal to 35. So now if I come back to just my y equals mx plus b form, I would have y equals, my slope is this common difference, so that would be negative 5, times x plus 35. Well, this isn't the form that I want to write my rule in, because I want it in terms of n's and a sub n's. Well, n was really equivalent to my x value, so I'm going to replace my x with an n. And my y value was really my a sub n. So now I've got my rule for my particular sequence. Now if you think about what this really says, we're going to write it in terms of variables. So I have a sub n is equal to, well the negative 5 was actually my difference, and I had to take that times n, 
Now this 35, this 35 is a little bit trickier. We have to think about it in terms of our starting position. Well, from our starting position, I have to go back one. So I kind of have to go to the zero term. So it's really going to be plus my a sub 1, and then I have to minus one of my d's, because I'm actually backtracking one. And if you look at our pattern, it would work that way. I would take my 30 minus, well, my common difference was negative 5, changes into plus a positive, so I do end up getting that 35. Okay, this is one way that you can write it, but a more common way would be to rearrange it so that we would have um, d times n minus d plus that a sub 1. And from there, we could pull out a d from these first two terms and end up with a sub n is equal to d times n minus 1 plus a sub 1. So this last formula right here is probably the most common formula to use to write it. But you can always resort back to the slope-intercept form also to get there. All right, so here's the first example. It says let a sub 10 equal 30, and let the common, common difference be 6. Write a rule for the nth term. I'm going to use the slope-intercept form, where we have y equals mx plus b. Now, a sub 10 is telling me that n is equal to 10, and a sub n is equal to 30. So this is kind of like my x, and this is kind of like my y. I know my d which is my slope, is equal to 6. So I need to figure out what b is so I can write my rule. So I'm going to plug in my 30, plug in my 6, plug in my 10, solve this out, and I get b is equal to negative 30. So my, um, my rule for the nth term, if I come back to my slope-intercept form, I would have a sub n is equal to 6 times n minus 30. You could also use the formula that we wrote down on the slide right here. Plug in the 6 for the d, plug in the 10 for the n, and then plug in 30 for our a sub n value, and you could solve it out that way also to get your your rule. Um, the next one here gives me two terms. So this time, if I look at it as an xy chart, which would be the same thing as an n, a sub n chart, I have 5, 12, and then 20, and 42. So now if I start with my y equals mx plus b again, you can transfer it actually right away if you want into a sub n is equal to dx plus your b first thing I have to do is actually I have to find my slope. So this time, since I don't have the graph of it, I'm going to use my slope formula. So I'm going to take my 42 minus 12 over 20 minus 5, subtract those off, and I'm going to get 30 over 15, which is a 2. So my common difference, or my slope, is 2. Now I'm going to plug it back in here. I'm just going to pick one of these terms. I'm going to pick the 5 and the 12, and I'm going to plug them in here for my values. So my a sub n would be 12 is equal to 2 times my 5. Oh, that should be an n in this formula right there. Plus b. Solve that out and you get b is also equal to 2. So then my rule would be a sub n is equal to 2n plus 2. And then you can always check these. You can plug the 20 in here and make sure it gives you back a 42. And then you can also plug the 5 in there. Take your 2 times 5 plus 2 and make sure it gives you back a 12. And in each case it does, so then we know that our rule is right. Okay, so in general, an ar arithmetic sequence has a common difference, and we usually denote that by a d, or think of it as the slope of a line. And then the rule, it's going to be a linear equation. Oh, here I have it, the common difference being the slope. That's actually pretty important. You can use any ideas from writing equations of a line, or you can actually use that special formula 
um, for arithmetic sequences 